Hello all, and before I maybe get into this video about science, uh, I wanted to do a little bit of housekeeping, address that I did change uh, my name on the channel. I just found Bongo uh, as a nickname that I've had for a long time in real life, and it sounds more personable than Midwit Tick. And uh, I just think that the name was kind of uh, depreciating and kind of a and I don't know it was kind of a douchey name honestly in hindsight I, I don't like I didn't like it very much after all uh, even though I was trying to be kind of you know, I think a lot of these lifelong sort of esoteric intellectuals uh, need to get smacked down a peg or two and so I try to be as uh, humble as I can because, uh, you know, when you read all these guys and take in all their stuff, you kind of realize how much they get stuck into their own world and kind of lack self-awareness, really. Uh, which I guess is kind of, you kind of need that to build, you know, entire systems into being, I suppose. But, anyway. Alas, I am not one of these great geniuses. I am on the shoulder of giants, and uh, I figure one of them we could point at today would be Heidegger and uh, some of his critiques of science. Uh, you know, you see all over the funny memes about uh, the I love science crowd and whatnot, and I figured maybe we can kind of give. Uh, an honest critique of it on this channel and uh, you know one of the first things I wanted to kind of brush up on is perhaps this misconception that I think happens with science and how people kind of see it uh, in our world today and that's you know science you think of inquiry you think of yeah, the Socratic method even if you will um, you think of uh, you know, experimentation and uh, you know, trying to find you know, these properties, these laws uh, about you know some sort of object or some sort of phenomenon, and uh, you know, in that kind of thirst for an explanation, as Heidegger kind of talks about, um, you know, it's it's ultimately going to give a kind of objective answer. It's gonna, you know sees the mystery of these kind of phenomenons that uh, happen and you know sometimes the the realism the myth uh, you know what more of what the artist is uh, inclined to see uh, you know ultimately science in this kind of way it has an imperial uh, essence to it. it you know it has to have an explanation uh, one way or another and to uh, you know wherever you can't uh, sort of uh, wherever that mystery still lies, which will you know, always happen uh, if you want to kind of take Heidegger's kind of world and Earth kind of dichotomy. The Earth is always going to poke back up, and the world's going to have to you know take that in. And so there's always going to be some sort of mystery, no matter what. Uh, no matter how far science can potentially go, really. And, uh, you know, I think to get uh, perhaps to one of my f the fundamentals on this channel, uh, you know, is understanding that when science sort of um, comes into view for our civilization, uh, for the West, you uh, you know it kind of starts off with this kind of uh, anatomy, the the skeleton, and this kind of fixation on these uh, you know the composition of uh, you know, like this like physical body, and you know to be able to kind of investigate this human body, you uh, it kind of requires. Uh, a sort of static uh, approach to it. 
you have to take it in as you know cold as like a dead form uh, you know a law or a principle whatever the case may be it's uh, it's kind of it, it has that encapsulation if you will uh, like like a brick if you will this kind of concrete uh, way of uh, perceiving something and obviously you know science nobody would deny that obviously I think the the beauty if you will uh, of science is that it's so it's so powerful it's so compelling that it's actually you know became this own kind of trust and following uh, procedure and uh, you know as Heidegger kind of points out in some of his lectures more explicitly uh, you know science and the kind of faith into it now that we've seen with uh, public policy in the last year uh, would definitely kind of rely on faith and you know science uh, despite this kind of call for inquiry uh, you know in order to sustain itself in order to kind of sustain its sort of s uh, system view uh, that easily makes it palpable for uh, you know crushing out kind of the, the artist and his kind of dissident uh, viewpoints uh, because you know that could go against the kind of laws and principles that uh, science tries to set forth for us and so science has that kind of imperial gaze that I keep uh, alluding to and you know I think just at the same time you have a generation of kids saying that they love and trust science uh, arts you know contemporary art and uh, music and all these other kind of forms of explanations of our lives and how to you know quite literally cheat death if you want to look at it from a Spenglerian point of view um, you know uh, obviously most people say that there's been a great decline uh, you know movies and uh, you know kind of the cultural industry uh, which could be extrapolated to I think science in a way you know if science now is kind of almost this artistic culture or it's like a shitty replacement obviously in uh, our view um, you know does science also have a sort of industry within it where you know big pharma and you know these kind of capitalistic firms are able to use the sciences to uh, use these uh, principles and forms to uh, rule with just like uh, the priestly would do uh, through uh, you know God's revelation and so just like now I guess one of the main uh, focal points perhaps that people might miss on some of the uh, you know maybe my edgy kind of titles on quantities of color uh, it's actually not supposed to necessarily be edgy it's more of understanding that in this kind of like scientific viewpoint that even something like a uh, struggle or the sense of kind of overcoming uh, these identities that have been set forth there's a scientific there's a political science explanation of you know the troubles that someone's gonna face the tribulations of being a minority in uh, a racially uh, unjust America or um, you know being a middle classer uh, that has uh, um, you know the agency of a uh, of a higher class trying to pick at them and uh, you know I think uh, when you kind of have that sort of, um, when you have, you know, when when you have like a political science, these kind of social sciences that you know uh, I went to school for, even um, ultimately, I think you could conclude that actually, like, we are being seen as kind of these dead forms, these dead dialectics now, uh, because if you're going to kind of form principle and laws about how to rule and uh, you know, have authority. 
you're gonna you know kill the uh, you know the artistic way of uh, um, actually doing authority uh, you know I think an authority that's actually worth mimicking uh, that can be replicated like uh, in that sort of way is underappreciated uh, to be able to kind of replicate uh, you know the struggle of being uh, in this kind of active way is way better than the kind of uh, you know just sitting around and doing philosophy which I'm obviously guilty of myself um, you know how do we actually kind of break out of that how do we break out of these kind of dichotomies of seeing us as these kind of stagnant forms these presuppositions if you will that, um, that are kind of inherent to the, the way we uh, think about these things and uh, you know if we have these kind of formulaic answers uh, you know the, the earth if you will as uh, Heidegger put it you know, it's going to poke back up eventually. It's going to it's going to challenge this this uh, system, and you know, I think above all else, it's kind of the concern that this system won't be able to be sustained much longer. Um, these political forms uh, have really been exhausted. Uh, you know, they complement these a much different uh, time, a much different complexion of. Uh, literal biology whether it's biological or or not I'm not saying that we you know this is I suppose how I try to contrast myself from a lot of uh, other people is you know I'm not trying to start some you know revolution or trying to like hone in on some scapegoated you know set of uh, people necessarily but it's actually to kind of overcome that uh, since we've now kind of almost reached the point where you know, we're just these kind of different demographics with these different perceived notions of who's uh, ruling over each other, and they're not even really accurate to begin with now. Um, you know, just as, I guess, this is, I'm saying, you know, these kind of social sciences, these political sciences, uh, political science disciplines, and, uh, you know, things like that. Um, you know, it's not gonna. You can't actually. I don't think you can actually solve any of these things since, uh, you know, everything's kind of just laid in this formulaic uh, way of understanding problems. Problems are uh, way more dimensional than that. The artist is able to see problems before uh, the law and principle. This is why art. Um, and obviously Heidegger's and a lot of the Germans uh, cases why art is superior arts always ahead of the philosopher arts always gonna be ahead of these kind of you know philosophy and these kind of social realms that kind of abstract what the kind of doer does and, you know I think there's a lot of angst and dread of as the philosopher ages he wants to get more and more involved because he realizes that you know, he's just kind of scribbling about what these other men were able to do and I think it kind of eats at him a little bit um, and they sometimes make decisions well you know ultimately uh, if you want to kind of go down that road you know I think this is something that you could crit critique maybe some of uh, you know, our adversaries if you will this you know, it's not like you got to choose these structures that were presented in front of you. You didn't get to tr choose, uh, you know, what what institution might give you the rub and what might not. And uh, you know, it's easy to see how, you know, when you have that kind of attitude, I think it's a lot easier to kind of take in these, you know, weird philosophers. Um, you know these French degenerates in the 60s and then you know these kind of um, you know occultist German uh, uh, racialists <laughs> before them um, and now I'm kind of getting off the rails here uh, but 
you know, I think if you we have this kind of culture that's, you know, for science and about the science, then that's ultimately, uh, you know, a part of the stagnation of why we aren't able to transcend at all because we're seen in this dead form, I guess, to summarize. Um, but, you know, the artist, uh, the artist is greater than his own, uh, his own walls. You know, he's outside of them. Um, he's thinking outside of uh, his own perspectivity. Uh, you know, kind of in an inherent way, he's creating a new world. And I think if we want to, you know, I think the much more interesting and perhaps uh, antidote to these kind of problems we're having, you know, mainly about the self, in my opinion, I think, um, I think if we're able to actually confront the self, this is how we can maybe get away from all these grifters to begin with, you know, all the time we get feel betrayed by these politicians and you know I mean obviously there's a lot to say about democracy and whether it's redeemable still in this system anyway uh, but you know I think I think ultimately you know kind of taking this cultural uh, industry and seeing it now as kind of a, a, a science industry um, it's an interesting way of uh, looking at the world around us uh, and seeing all these different you know, studies that people are able to tout about um, that are totally uh, at odds with each other but uh, you know it's that kind of um, that need for power for the imperial kind of vision within science that kind of justifies how it could be you know corrupted in such a way to begin with uh, is perhaps the fundamental point that I'm trying to get at but yeah this was just a quick little video to show I'm still alive I guess uh, it was just uh, something I've been thinking about uh, since trying to reorientate myself on social media and you know seeing some of the memes and just uh, some of the takes around uh, these uh, internet circles, if you will. Um, but yeah, I'd really appreciate if people could, uh, you know, follow or interact uh, on Twitter. Uh, I know a lot of people are just banned and don't even bother anymore. Uh, Twitter was the only one that was merciful enough to take my uh, log cabin ass uh, because it really didn't need a lot of. Uh, uh, registration to begin with that I don't even have to do for other uh, platforms so that's the main reason I'm on there I don't know how long I'll be able to last I already am wondering if I'm shadow banned half the time anyway <laughs> uh, but yeah uh, if you guys are on there at all I would appreciate being able to interact with people um, but thanks for watching uh, I'll see you guys for the next one